What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for a UFC Fight Night Maya versus Usman. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Claudio Puelas versus Felipe Silva. And to me, Felipe Silva looks like he's the better, um, what's it called, striker overall. But I think Claudio Puelas is uh, more well-rounded. And to me, Felipe Silva got knocked out, like, one punch in his last fight. So that makes me worry about his chin a little bit. You know, Claudio Pellas hasn't fought since the Ultimate Fighter finale, which was like two years ago. Hopefully he's been training and getting better, but like I said, I do think Claudio is the much more well-rounded guy, and I think if he gets this fight to the ground, he'll win by submission, so I'm leaning towards Claudio. Next is Henry Boris versus Frankie Sines, and this is like striker versus grappler. I think Henry Boris is the better striker, but he doesn't have a lot of power. A lot of his wins are from like accumulative damage, and I don't know if he'll be able to stop the takedowns of Frankie Signs. I think Frankie Signs is too strong of a wrestler in this fight, and I think he's just going to grind out a decision win. Next, we got Enrique Barzola versus Brendan Davis, and Brendan Davis has looked impressive. He has really strong like Muay Thai style striking with decent takedown defense, but. You know, I think they're a little too high on him. I feel like, like I said, Henrik Barzola, I feel so bad for this dude because he's like 5-1 and one in the UFC at this point, and he should be 6-0 and because oh his one loss was horse shit. At this point, I feel like, I don't know why they're not giving him a top 15 guy. I feel like he's ready for it. He looks like a top 15 guy, in my opinion. I think that Brendan Davis is probably going to be outlanding him a little bit on the feet, and then Henrik will just use the wrestling when he needs to and just grind out a decision. I think that's what he does. He doesn't really gas, and he's great at just hitting takedowns over and over again. So I got Enrique Barzola winning by decision. Next is Gabriel Benitez versus Roberto uh, Bendeni. And I'm going to lean towards Roberto. I think both these guys are like striker jiu-jitsu guys, but I think Roberto has just got too much more firepower. I think he's just the more powerful guy overall, like in terms of wrestling and striking. And... You know, Gabriel's probably the more technical guy, but I think Huberto's just going to, like, swarm him, overwhelm him, and either win by knockout or submission, probably in the first round. Next is Paulina Montello versus uh, Siri Kondo. And to me, this is just like the last fight. I think Siri just has too much firepower. I think that this is going to be a striking fight for as long as it lasts. And I think Siri just has... Is just the bigger, stronger, better striker with more firepower. And I think Siri's probably going to win by knockout. Maybe... Probably a decision just because you don't see that too often in women's ever made the knockouts, but I just feel like Siri's got a huge advantage in the striking, and she's probably just going to win by, like I said, either a dominant decision or a late knockout. Next, we got Brandon Moreno versus Alexandre Pantoja, and I think this fight's going to be a lot like their first fight. I think it's going to be an amazing back and forth war with Pantoja eventually winning by submission. I think that. Overall, Pantoja is just the better grappler, and I think striking-wise, he's just cleaner technically. I think both these guys have almost the exact same style, just Moreno's more wild. I think that, like I said, I think Pantoja hits a little bit harder, and his striking technique's a little cleaner, and I also think his grappling game's just a little bit higher level overall. And, like I said, this was probably going to be fight of the night, and as long as it lasts, I think it's going to be an amazing fight, but I think eventually Pantoja takes Moreno's back and wins by submission. Next, we got Zach Cummings versus Michael Pizarras. And to me, I'm so glad that they forced Michael Pizarras up to welterweight because every single fight he was starting to miss weight and by more and more. His last fight, he weighed at like 63 or something like that, and he was fighting at lightweight. You know, now at welterweight, I think he's going to get smushed, especially by Zach. I think Zach is much taller, much bigger, and Pizarras isn't just going to be able to take him down and beat him up and wear him out with his size like he was doing to the lightweights. I think Zach is much bigger than him and much better wrestler overall, and I think... Zach's probably going to win the decision. I don't think this will be the most exciting fight ever, but like I said, I just think Zach's size and wrestling strength is going to help him in the wrestling positions, and he's just going to win by decision, which I think Pizarro just needs to either work on making weight or, you know, realize that these welterweights are going to be way too big. It's going to be like the Johnny Hendricks situation, in my opinion, where he moved up to middleweight and he's just too small for that shit. Anyway... I got Zach Cummings winning by decision. Next is Vicente Luque versus Chad Laprise. And this fight sucks because I think it's just whoever lands that big shot first. I think that Chad Laprise can probably just win a decision cause just because Vincent's never been knocked out. But if Luque can hit Chad with a big shot at any point in time, because we've seen Chad get knocked out and dropped several times before, I think that's what's probably going to happen too. I think Vincent's probably going to be losing up until he wins. Kind of like how um, Mackenzie Dern was in her fight. I think Laprise is going to be winning the first like minute or two, and eventually Luque is going to land like a big uppercut or a big hook. And when he does, he's probably either going to knock him out or you know get on top of him on the ground and choke him out because he's got amazing chokes. So I got Luque winning by first round stoppage. Next is 
Vercano Macando versus Adriana Lee. And both these chicks are kind of like grapplers with a little bit of striking. And I just think Adriana Lee is a level higher than uh, Vercano in every area. So I got Adriana winning by submission probably in like the second round. Next is Diego Rivera's versus uh, Guado Canati. And I just want to say, it's so fucking weird that they have, like, some of these guys on the main card instead of, like, Pantoja versus Moreno. Like, Pantoja versus Moreno should be the goddamn co-main event. It's the second best fight on this card. It's so annoying when I see better fights on the undercard and these, like, no-name dudes on the top. Like, it's no offense to these no-name dudes, but, you know, they have to build themselves up. Like, Pantoja and Moreno are, like, 10 and 7 like, ranked, or, like, Pantoja's, like, 11 or 12, but you know what I mean? They're both really highly ranked at flyweight, and they're both really exciting, and I don't know why this isn't, that isn't the co-main event, and, like, this fight's on the main card. Sorry about that, but just got a rant when shit annoys me, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, Diego Rivas versus Guadio, um, I'm leaning towards Guadio, I think that this is just one of those striking matchups, like, this is a decent fight overall, just because both these guys are high-level strikers, but, like I said, they're just not super huge names, but I'm leaning towards Guado. I think he just has more power. I think he also has a stronger wrestling game, so if he needs to hit takedowns, he can. So, I think Guado is either going to win by late TKO or just decision. Next is Jared Conier versus uh, Dominic Reyes, and I think both these guys are really great strikers. I think Dominic Reyes has a better grappling game overall, but I don't think he's going to be able to take Jared Conier down. I just think Conier's takedown defense is too good. So it's kind of going to come down to, like, you know, who's got the better striking technique overall. And I think Reyes does. I think he mixes it up better. And I think unless Jared lands a big shot and knocks him out, I think that this is just going to be a technical striking match back and forth. And I think Dominic Reyes just mixes it up better. And Dominic Reyes is probably just going to win a decision. Next is Alexa Grasso versus Tatiana Suarez. And to me, this is an interesting fight just because Tatiana should be in the top 10. And I think this is the fight that's going to propel her into it. I think her wrestling is too good for a lot of these lower level chicks. You know, Alexandra Grasso, in my opinion, she, she I thought she lost her last fight. And the fight before, you know, she was getting outstruck and taken down by, um I forget her name. But I think, it, you know, if what's her face could take her down. I think Tatiana Suarez is going to be able to hit the takedowns whenever she wants. I think her wrestling is too strong for Alexa, and this is going to be a dominant beatdown. I think Alex Tatiana Suarez is just going to continuously get this fight to the ground. I don't know if she'll finish it, but she's going to dominate from like start to finish. So I got Tatiana Suarez winning by either decision or late finish. Finally, we got Damian Maya versus Kamaru Usman, and you know I want to pick Damian Maya. You know, just because I like him so much, but it's one of those things where realistically he's just not going to win. I feel like this fight is no different than the last two fights he just had. I mean, he's essentially fighting. I don't know why he took this fight on such short notice. It, it makes no sense. Like, he literally just fought Tyron Woodley and Colby Covington, and now you're fighting Karam Usman. And all three of these guys fight the exact same way. You couldn't take any of them down, and their striking is better than yours. The same thing is going to happen. Damian Maya is not going to be able to take Usman down, most likely. And Usman's eventually probably going to knock out Damian Maya because it's a five-round fight. But, you know, I want to pick Damian Maya. I hope he wins by rear naked choke, but I just can't. Like, realistically, he's not going to win this fight. It's going to be exactly like his last two fights, except for he's probably going to get knocked out because Usman hits harder than Covington, and he has a higher output than um, Woodley does. So I've got Usman winning by, like, fourth-round TKO. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.